everyone and welcome back to the F2 show by Inside F2. Aaron and Omi joining me today for a special episode of the F2 show. We're in the middle of another break and uh, it's something we've become accustomed to, Aaron. I think that's fair to say in Formula 2. Nice long breaks, uh, but they never seem to get any quicker, do they? No, they seem to last longer and longer, don't they, really? I mean, you, you like that meme, the, the guy just walking around his garden, sitting on his swing bench, staring into his empty swimming pool, just dreaming of the day that Formula 2 cars hit the track again. And uh, yeah, when they do, it's excellent. Exactly that. Omi, first time on the podcast. Welcome to the Inside F2 team. What have you made of the season so far in Formula 2? I think the season's been uh, very, very good. Great to be here, first of all. But I think we've had a very exciting season. We, of course, came into the season with two predicted uh, championship contenders, Martins and Behrman, and both aren't up there right now in the championship standings. And both have had rough seasons so far. We've had a lot of drivers who we didn't expect to be up there. So it's been a great season of F2 so far. Brilliant racing. I think the regs are wor- uh, working brilliantly as well. So excited to see what the rest of this F2 season will deliver. Yeah, definitely. There's There's been a lot of talk about the regs, isn't there, and the impacts that they've had. What have you, uh, yeah, so, so you're saying that you think they've been a positive, uh, had a positive impact on the Formula 2 season, even though we have seen some teams struggle to adapt to them, Prima and ART maybe, yeah? Yep, absolutely. We, of course, did see Prima and ART always be quick with the old regs as well. So a little change, of course, having to get used to it after a few years. We, of course, had these. Uh, we, of course, had the old regs come in in 2018. We've now had these ones come in, in uh, this year in 2024. So a little bit uh, of adapting needed, but I'm sure they will get there at some point and will be in contention for victories later on. But yeah, the racing has been good and Formula 2 is all about the amazing action. Uh, we definitely love all of the amazing action that takes place week in, week out. So uh, that has remained and it's getting even better. So loving it so far. Definitely. It's been a great start to the season, hasn't it? Now, what we thought we'd do, so we put a tweet out on in, on Twitter at Inside F2, um, and we, or X, or whatever you want to call it these days, uh, and we said, uh, what is an unpopular Formula 2 opinion, opinion that you have? And we had loads come in, so we picked some uh, unpopular opinions to discuss, haven't we, guys? Um, so let's start with uh, at SimFormel123, uh, who says, Formula 2 is better than Formula 1. Completely agree. Next, next unpopular opinion. No, it's uh, yeah, it, Aaron. I, there, there's so much action, as Omi's just mentioned, so much action in every single round of a Formula Two event, if you like. And uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, well, I definitely agree with that one personally. I mean, you're not comparing like for like, really, are you? Because Formula One is a you have to build it, bring what you build, sort of thing. And Formula Two, it's a spec series. And the teams are smaller. There's a very different dynamic. So you're not completely comparing like for like. But what you can't deny is you will generally get a lot more action in a Formula 2 race weekend than you will across a Formula 1 race weekend, per se. There are, of course, some spectacular Formula 1 races that have gone down in the annals of history. And I've been fortunate enough to watch many of them live. So (laughs) they're, they're definitely there. But... Formula 2 throws up surprises week in, week out. You don't get necessarily the same race winner of a feature race from weekend to weekend, nor do you get the same race winner on the same weekend. It's a very special feat for a driver to score two feature race two feature race victories in a row or to win both races on a single weekend. We have seen it done and we'll see it done again, but it takes a little bit of luck, a lot of quality, and primarily a lot of speed. But, you know, to, to say F2 is better than F1, it's not quite comparing apples with apples. It's apples and oranges a little bit. But I can see what they're saying. You definitely get more action. Just be careful because Formula 1 does seem to be hotting up a little bit more at the moment. So that balance could shift. But, you know, for what we look for in Formula 2, you get a lot more almost bang for your buck. Completely agree. Omi, do you agree with what Aaron's just said? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Of course, different dynamics, of course. But if you do want amazing action, if you do want guaranteed action week in, week out, F2 is definitely the place, delivers uh, brilliant action all the time, uh, unexpected winners, and even Monaco delivering us with some thrilling action as well and uh, some surprises. So definitely uh, Formula 2, of course, is great and always will be great. Definitely delivers uh, every every week. But of course, comparing it with Formula 1, uh, Formula One slightly different, so 
Uh, Formula 2 definitely is very good. So is Formula 1. But Formula 2, if you want action, is the place to be. Definitely. Okay, moving on to the next unpopular opinion we had then. So uh, Daryl Finch on Twitter said, ditch reverse grid races. They don't exist in Formula One and I don't need to see a driver race from a position they couldn't qualify in. Yes, it creates more exciting races, but F2 is fundamentally about highlighting the best young talent. Uh, that should pres- uh, that should pr- precedent over excitement. Uh, Omi, we'll come to you first on that one. What are your thoughts on that? Should we be ditching reverse races in Formula 2? Well, I'm kind of mixed on it because, of course, the reason why they exist is the drivers, um, of course, it, 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 Formula 2 is for the teams to see how the drivers are. And yes, you can dominate from the front pole to win, but it also does get to show us some of the overtaking skills from the drivers, how they manage to overtake and get their way up through the field. So it's not all about dominating from the front of the field, but they also need to try make their way up through the field, try make some overtakes. And it definitely does give us a little bit of an idea of their overtaking skill. Like, for example, Kushmani last season was uh, very late on the brakes on a numerous of occasions last year, delivered mm-hmm. some brilliant overtaking. So that's something that teams could see, for example. So spin races definitely do, uh, um, spin races definitely do show some of the driver skill but at the same time yes uh, it does spice up the uh, championship dinners with action but um, sometimes it can be a little unfair for the drivers when let's say if we're at a track like Monaco where you qualify in pole but you can you start 10th uh, in the sprint and then you finish 10th you can't really make any overtakes so it can be a little bit uh, mixed um, the sprint races but for Formula 2 in my opinion they do work as it does get to show us some of the drivers talent and that's what Formula 2 is for. As I agree with that. Um, I'm not sure we should be getting rid of reverse grid sprint races. I, I like them because, you know, it's an opportunity for drivers who might not necessarily get the chance to be at the front to be there. I'm an advocate of Formula One taking on reverse grid sprints because um, I think it would provide, first of all, it, it would lean into the entertainment aspect that Formula One is looking for. And Formula Two has shown that, you can have reverse grid sprint races and do it effectively. And so it's almost essentially a, it could be used like a testing ground for future F1 formats. Maybe that's what they should be doing with it so that these drivers are testing things out in a really robust way because we see the drivers still push, they still make mistakes, they still have to weigh up, do I need to make this move for my championship hopes or I need to make this move to gain points in the championship they're still critical parts of that race weekend. And, you know, I don't want to do anyone a disservice, but if you've got a faster driver coming through trying to overtake a slower driver in a slower team, per se, then there's still that balance to be had. There's still that entertainment. Do they go for the move? How hard does the person in front defend? Look at Roman Stanek in Australia. He, through hard defence, got himself a sprint race win. Okay, it was slightly... um, fortuitous in the fact that the stewards were involved but a win's a win you'll take it so without them i don't think we'd get stories like that and also you know it's it's just good to see other drivers at the front and see their skills too remember all of these drivers are used to being at the front so when they get that opportunity they generally do quite well Definitely. It's a really interesting point you raise around, uh, yeah, Formula 2 almost being a bit of a guinea pig for Formula 1 race weekend formats. I think that's really interesting. And I obviously, so sprint races in Formula 1 have been around for a few years now. We all know that. And I I think this version of the format that we've got in Formula 1 at the moment is the best that it's been, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, would, would you have liked to have seen that tested on Formula in Formula Two before we went to that in Formula One, Aaron, and and do you think that because I personally I really like the Formula Two format as well. I think that's the best it's ever been. We used to have obviously feature races on a Saturday and sprint races on a Sunday, which has now been uh, reversed or flipped over um, for, to to make sure a Sunday is the most important day. So um, yeah, what are you, what are your thoughts on that, Aaron? I don't think you can test the current Formula One model on, on a Formula Two weekend because they do a single qualifying session, you'd end up having more F2 action than more than F1 action, which mm. doesn't really True. make sense. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite straightforward. Formula One, all they needed to do was take the F2 format and it would have been job done, but yeah. they seem to be obsessed with having multiple qualifying sessions and you know all sorts. But 
you know, let's not teach them to suck eggs, but, you know, it was already there for them. So, yeah, the the, the, the point of being a testing ground for obviously drivers, but also potentially new rules and new ways of using DRS, If well, they're not going to be using DRS in F1 from 2026 onwards, but you get my point, using new sort of regulations, testing them, making sure they work before you implement it into Formula One and you end up with a 2016 qualifying sort of scenario where there's no cars on track. So, you know, let, let's use the junior categories actually to help Formula One. That, that's kind of more the point I'm trying to make. The, the sprint format for F2, just put it in F1, it will work. Interesting. I'd love to see that as well. I'd love to see the sprint format in Formula One as well. Uh, moving on then. Um, so NA81786 uh, for blah, blah, blah. You get the point. Uh, says um, F2 shouldn't just race on Formula One race weekends. We've obviously seen in the past one event in Formula Two back in 2017 when Formula Two uh, had a standalone event in Jerez uh, back in the day. Uh, Omi, would you like to see some more standalone Formula Two events? Uh, away from a Formula One race weekend? Well, definitely could help with the breaks, of course. That would definitely help because we do, of course, see long breaks, especially when we get uh, the races done after the summer break and then we have a long break till the end of the season. Luckily, this year, though, we do have also Qatar uh, right at the end of the season. So more to fight for one is definitely going to go all the way till uh, the end, of course. Uh, but yes, uh, it would be good, of course, would give maybe more opportunities for fans, but at the same time, not being on the F1 weekend, um, it it would also uh, mean that uh, it does get less popularity and it definitely does mean a little bit of that possibly also. Um, it would definitely have some negatives, like maybe from a broadcasting uh, standpoint, there would be a lot of things that's not really on the F1 uh, weekend. So uh, definitely it's got, it, it definitely will have some negatives, but could open the door for some other things uh, at the same time as well. Aaron, would you like to see a standalone Formula 2 event or a couple throughout the season? I think the idea would be nice, but the whole point of Formula 2 is for them to essentially impress and wow the F1 teams. And if the F1 teams aren't at the race weekend, are they going to be paying that much attention? Let's be honest. Mm. They're very, very busy, these boys and girls at the Formula 1 factories. They're, uh, in the case of some teams, rebuilding the cars, <laughs> so depending on their drivers and what they've been up to on a given race weekend. So I think the idea would be nice in, in terms of, you know, you get... The, the F2 guys being the top dogs at a race weekend. They're not always in the shadow of Formula One superstars and the media circus. They could almost take that mantle on. You, you might see their characters. Do they deal with constant interviews to TV you know, throughout the weekend? But again, like Omi said, broadcasters, would they really be interested in broadcasting it? They broadcast F2 and F3 because it's on a Formula One weekend. It's the pathway to Formula One. So they're all joined up. It's, yeah, I mean, I th I kind of think that we need a category that's between F1 and F2, literally an F1.5, because there are so many good drivers that yeah. are in F2 that can't reach the F1 grid. Yeah. And you could also argue it would maybe bridge that gap in terms of experience, so that they'd get used to a similar sort of car, or at least a version of that car. And it would be a bridge. But again, that's that's money, that's time. It's probably never going to happen. I'm living in a fantasy world. But, you know, you, you're seeing those opportunities missed. And I think, you know, if you, if you didn't have drivers on an F1 race weekend, they would just quickly get lost. Look at drivers when they leave F1 and they go and do uh, Formula E and WEC. They never come back. Yeah. They just disappear into the motorsport ether. So, you know, keep it on the F1 race weekends is probably the way to go because then you've got more chance of getting those drivers into the F1 circus. We need more seats in Formula 1. We mention it all the time, don't we? Get Andretti and <laughs> get a couple more in and a couple more teams, and let's have some more some more teams on the Formula 1 grid, some more seats available for some of these young drivers to uh, to get involved in. Okay, moving on. The next one is Elvis the Sheep 64. Love the username. Uh, Elvis the Sheep says, Kimi Antonelli's start to the F2 season has actually been very impressive, both in terms of speed and consistency. And he's clearly ready for Formula One in 2025. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, right, you will know that I am 
absolutely in agreement with Elvis the Sheep there because uh, I've tweeted it, uh, or I've been having that discussion with a few people recently, um, whereby uh, a few people perhaps saying, you know, Kimi Antonelli, he hasn't done anything in Formula 2 so far this season. Um, and I'm saying... 17 years old, skipped a category, uh, has never driven on a Formula One race weekend, has never driven some of these circuits before. He's got the top, he's in the top four highest average qualifiers um, so far this season. He's in the top six of the championship and he was driving a car that was similar to a bus in Bahrain. For me, he's, uh, he's uh, had, you know, he's exactly where I think he should be in relation to the potential and the, the expectation that's on him right now. And it would not surprise me if he goes and wins or potentially gets on the podium or wins, uh, you know, a, a race or two, maybe in the triple header that's coming up, Barcelona, Austria, Silverstone. Um, Aaron, what are, your, what are your thoughts on that? And, uh, yeah, do you think that, uh, is that... Is that an unpopular opinion from Elvis the Sheep saying that, uh, his, you know, his, his speed and his consistency has been impressive? I can see what Elvis the Sheep is saying because there was so much hype ahead of the season. We were all guilty of it, let's be honest. Yeah, we, we expected were. Kimi to turn up and wipe the floor with everybody and just waltz into Mercedes and start taking on Verstappen <laughs> and you know just destroying everybody. It hasn't happened. But this yeah. is this is why Formula 2 this is why he needed to be in Formula 2 because he would have done exactly that I think in F3. Yeah. So Mercedes knew that they needed to challenge him properly. He's not going to learn anything not being challenged. So at the moment, he is going through that learning phase. And we hear Alex Jakes say it all the time. Oscar Piastri took a little while to get his feet under the table in F2. And when he did, he blew everybody away and then sat at the waiting room for Formula One yeah. <laughs> and then caused all sorts of other controversy. So look, it's not unheard of. It wouldn't surprise any of us if he turned up in Spain or Austria or Silverstone and just suddenly... Bam, he's half a second clear of everybody. He's on pole position. Everyone's finishing a week behind him in the races. And we go, <laughs> okay, this is what he can do. He's However, here. what we expected and what we're getting are not matching up. There's a, there's a lot to be said of, for that because he's young, he's learning. Like I said, it's, it's that challenge. And also, it's new regulations. Prima still haven't quite got their head around it. And I think there's another factor in this. And I know... I know going to fanboy again, but I'm going to name drop him, but <laughs> Oliver Behrman. You'd, you'd have expected Oliver Behrman to be that yardstick for him in F2 in terms of the raw speed, and I think we're getting that, but Behrman hasn't had the results. And there's myriad of factors for that, is F1 appearance in, in Saudi Arabia and just the way the season's unfolded for him. <clears throat> so I don't think we're getting a true sort of reflection on where Antonelli sits compared to Behrman. We know Behrman is basically ready for Formula One. Where is Antonelli on that? Once Behrman gets himself sorted out, I think we'll see exactly where Antonelli is. And I'm sure we'll see them fighting on the track next season um, at some point in Formula One. Although if it's Haas and Mercedes, maybe it's just lapping, but we'll see. Yeah. The, the Piastri comparison is a really interesting one because I had this conversation with someone on Twitter uh, in the last week or so, whereby they said, uh, compared to Oscar Piastri, he's not, Antonelli is not performing. Um, and, you know, we all know that Oscar Piastri uh, at the start of the season, albeit, you know, a sprint race win uh, in Bahrain where he had a reverse grid, he didn't start winning races until the final five rounds of the season, right? Uh, so uh, let's give Antonelli a chance. Let's wait and see what he's like. And I think the next three, four rounds are going to be quite crucial uh, for him and his season. And he may well, and I would not be surprised if he starts proving people wrong. Uh, Omi, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think uh, Kim Antonelli, uh, what have you made of his season so far? And uh, what do you think he could do for the rest of the season? Yeah, absolutely. He came into the season very hyped. People really expected him to do what Zane Maloney basically did in Bahrain, but nearly, uh, but nearly every week, basically. So um, he has done. He, he definitely has done well. He's, of course, got lots of fourth place finishes. He's been close to the podium. And... And it's been around lots of circuits that he hasn't raced that as well. 
Uh, Bahrain, of course, he had a lot of testing, but uh, as you mentioned, the Premier was basically a bust that weekend. Then we went to Jeddah. Uh, he started showing some signs there, but that wasn't a track that he uh, raced at. Same with Australia, even though he managed to get on the front row in qualifying for the feature race. So that was a great performance uh, by him. Imola, he really hasn't had any luck. Monaco, he hasn't raced that. Now we're heading to circuits that he uh, has raced that uh, and Spain especially where uh, most drivers have absolutely no place to hide because they've raced around the circuit and also they've had testing they've had a lot of testing around this circuit so they basically need to perform and for someone like Martins or Behrman who hasn't had a good season so far it's a great opportunity at the start of this triple header to try turn it around they've had a lot of testing around the circuits there is now their chance uh, as we go into the proper European part of the season, we've, we've of course had Monaco and uh, Imola, but now we're going into the triple header and then also Hungary and Spa following. So this is your chance to try turn your season around, try get it uh, started. And Antonelli, I think uh, he's raced around these circuits. Now we're getting to a more familiar circuits for him. So he's going to have a huge opportunity to possibly get those podiums and wins, as you mentioned. So we're going to get to see more from Kimi Antonelli, I think, in this triple header. And I am going to predict that he is going to take a victory as well in one of the races. Oh, we'll bookmark <laughs> that. We'll come back to that later on in the season, definitely. So I'm with you, though. I think he'll, I mean, definitely a podium in the next three rounds. Uh, and yeah, if not a win, absolutely. I completely agree. Uh, moving on then from one potential Formula One driver next season to another. Uh 93 Marquez on Twitter says Victor Martins is a much better driver than potential Alpine Formula One driver next season, Jack Doohan. Uh, Aaron, uh, over to you on that one, because I know you you quite rated Jack Doohan last season, didn't you? We obviously know now that he had a crack in the chassis, which was what caused him to have a poor start to the season uh, in Formula Two. And that probably cost him... Uh, definitely a shot at the title compared to, you know, Porsche and Vesti. Uh, is Victor Martins a better driver than Jack Dewan, Aaron? Very, very difficult one to say because Martins has shown on several occasions he is rapid. Yeah. It's just consistency that he lacks. And consistency is what he needs at the moment, as well as, you know, a bit of speed and a bit of fortune in 2024. He's really, really struggling for points this year. Is he better than Jack Doohan? I don't think so. I would have to disagree with that. I think Doohan is slightly more complete. I think he just... When push comes to shove, I think he can get the job done. And I don't think Martins is... In, I don't say entirely reliable, but... like Doohan reeled off three wins in a row last season. I don't see Martins doing that. I, I think that's just the, the point of it. And I think... Doing can put the car on pole position and drive away. I'm not sure Martins can do that necessarily. So I think Alpine would, I think they'll put Doing in the car and I think that would be the right choice. I think Martins is probably another year away from being ready for F1. But also we're not seeing anywhere near the best of Victor this year, which is a shame because we know how fast he can be. And if you get him at the sharp end, he's going to, score a lot of points and he's going to upset a few of the current championship leaders by denying them points. I mean, is it fair to say then that Jack Doohan, sorry, Victor Martins is potentially the better driver over one lap compared to Jack Doohan, but not in the race, uh, in races yet. Is that fair to say? Uh, well, if he can get the lap together, he definitely can be. And I think Victor Martins definitely does have the potential to possibly be the better driver than Doohan. But maybe it's going to take a little time uh, for him. And he's not at the start to the season that he wanted. And of course, there's a question mark over the Alpine seat that could go to Doohan. And Victor Martins really needed to be uh, winning every single race if he really wanted to have a chance. Because Doohan basically is the next one in line. Then maybe if there's another seat that opens and Martins... Uh, turns his season around that then there possibly could be an opportunity but yes Victor Martins can be pretty uh, quick in qualifying uh, so um, once again a hard one to judge but uh, I think they're both very quick drivers and uh, Victor Martins we're still yet to see what he can do this uh, season in his second year uh, properly so uh, he of course got on the front row in Monaco but of course in both races uh, he didn't get a grid launch off the uh, line so that was any chance gone there and for Victor Martins it probably would have been victory as well with Richard Rashaw's uh, issue Martins probably could have maybe got a few seconds up the road uh, and maybe just come out ahead of uh, O'Sullivan even with O'Sullivan's uh, virtual safety car uh, pit stop, which he was able to just get in uh, by a few seconds. It would have been disqualification. So that was uh, great stuff by uh, ART there and uh, quite a bit of luck going their way. But uh, yes, uh, definitely between Martins and Dewin, 
Um, they are both very talented drivers. And with Martins not having the best of season this year, it's it's slightly hard to judge on uh, where they both stand compared to each other. Omi, do you think that um, had Victor Martins had a strong start to the season and uh, you know maybe won a couple of races, uh, do you think he would have been in with a shot at getting the Alpine seat in Formula 1 next season that Jack Dewan could potentially get? I think he would have needed to win quite a lot of races and be very consistent because Dewan is basically kind of next in line. So I think they would have given him the shot. Uh, he's, of course, going to get FP1s and stuff. So I think he would have got the shot anyway. But Martins... If he really was to try and uh, dominate, and basically, if he really was to dominate this year uh, and win a lot of races already, uh, be up there, get a podium every round, kind of like Aaron as well. So I think he definitely could have had a slight shot uh, at the seat, but he really would have needed to impress. Interesting, interesting. Right, our final unpopular opinion of this podcast then. So, uh, honest uh, at honest F one uh, uh, on Twitter says. Several Formula 2 drivers are already better than several Formula 1 drivers. Now, that is a bold statement. It's an unpopular opinion for sure. Uh, Aaron, where do you stand on that? Do you reckon we've got a couple of uh, Formula 2 drivers who are better than the Formula 1 drivers? Yes. <laughs> wow, you agree? Yeah. Really? Okay, there interesting. Are, Hit me. There are a number of drivers, without naming names, who probably have either outstayed their welcome or shown that they're just not good enough. and you need to keep giving. You need to keep opening opportunities to young drivers. Look, if McLaren hadn't taken Oscar Piastri, where would he be, and where would they be as well? They, Ricardo wasn't getting any better. They did what they needed to do. It cost them a lot of money to get rid of Daniel Ricardo, but they're earning all that money back in prize money by having Oscar Piastri in the team. There are certain teams at the moment. The, the driving market is very fluid. There are certain teams, I'm going to sort of name drop Williams, who have taken young drivers from Formula 2 and they haven't necessarily performed. That's not necessarily because they're bad drivers. They've just not quite reached the level. Formula 1 isn't a finishing school. You have to go in and you have to perform. You can't, there is no hiding place in Formula 1. You get exposed very, very quickly. There are some situations that are a little bit unique looking at, certain teams that were good at points last year and aren't so good this year. And, you know, we, we'd love to see Behrman, um, Martins given a chance. I think he, he could potentially have the raw speed to be a Formula One driver. Um, Hadjar deserves a chance maybe at, uh, what are they called now? I'll just call them Alpha Tauri because everyone knows that. <laughs> um, you know, there's so many drivers. Vesti could have had a shot last year. Teo Porsche, for crying out loud, won the championship and isn't on the F1 grid. He's currently doing very well in IndyCar. So that shows you that there, there are definitely talents who don't even win F2, but they, they just can't get on the grid because they're – the spaces are locked up. There are certain drivers that have outstayed their welcome and need to move on, and they need to be replaced with young talent that is ready to just give it everything to to secure themselves a future in Formula One. And look, not all of them will make it. Not all of them will, will last five, six, seven seasons. They won't all go on to win world championships like Hamilton and Rosberg did, former GP2 winners. But... You know, you want to see them given that opportunity. And while you've got the, the sort of drivers who have been hanging around for a while, like a bit of a bad smell, you get a bit bored of them. It's like, well, they're racing. And, oh, they did that same silly thing again. Well, you know, isn't it time to get rid of them? So, you know, there's definitely drivers on that F2 grid that are good enough to be F1 drivers already. And I would say some of them are definitely better than the talent that's already in F1. Omi, in terms of current Formula 2 drivers, not past champions like Teo Porsche, because I'm completely with Aaron on that. Do you think in terms of current Formula 2 drivers that that is the case? Because, you know, you've got um, n there's not a single driver on the Formula 2 grid this year who has finished in the top four of the Formula 2 championship. Right. You then compare that to potentially some drivers in Formula One who have finished in the top three, the top four of the championship and have therefore progressed into Formula One. And they've got 
a year, two years, three years of Formula One experience. Can we really say that there's a Formula Two driver out there on the grid at the moment who is better than the drivers who are, you know, more suited to a Formula One car, for example, than than some of the drivers right now? Can we really say that? Well, I think we could. If we do look at the talent, there is quite a lot of talented F2 drivers in uh, the field. They've shown it throughout their uh, junior career. So I'm sure that uh, if it did click for a certain driver in a certain team, it definitely could work. And it definitely could mean that possibly some F2 drivers are beating some of the F1 drivers and are already uh, showing some great uh, talent. So um, it, it definitely is a hard one. We, we of course, won't know till they are given the opportunity to get into uh, Formula 1. That's the sad thing uh, about it. But I'm sure that when they do get given the opportunities, we are going to see that at least uh, they are better than some of the other drivers uh, that are on uh, the uh, grid. So, yeah, I think there are a few drivers that definitely do deserve it. And uh, not naming names, but maybe a few drivers who maybe shouldn't be on the F1 grid. It's really interesting and it's a conversation we could have all day long because I'm sure there are plenty of candidates. I'm with you, Aaron, that there's definitely some drivers who have won the championship or finished in the top two, three of the championship in previous years who should be on the grid right now, 100%. And uh, I think there's drivers on the Formula 2 grid who uh, have the potential to be better than some of the drivers who uh, are, are on the Formula 1 grid right now. But uh, yeah, that is a conversation for another day. That is all we've got time for, I'm afraid. Thank you for joining us, chaps, Aaron and Omi. Uh, but that, that's what we think. What do you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, do you agree with what the guys are saying? Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Let us know in the comments uh, what your thoughts and opinions are, what your unpopular opinions are about Formula 2. But from me, Fraser Ford, and all of us here at Inside F2, we'll see you next time.